Hey guys, how are you? Um, I'm Miss Cassie from the library and it's time for another author study. So uh, we're going to meet a new author today, but before we do, I want to hear a little bit about last month and who you were for your um, like wax museum biography study. So I know you had a Marie Curry in your class and I think there was a George Washington. Um, so I'm super excited to see the work that you did. Uh, I think Mrs. Turpin is going to bring those over to me so I can see the cool stuff you created. Um, and I can't wait until we can like see each other in person. But until then, we're going to do some more videos. So I'm going to sit in my chair and um, talk a little bit about our author of the month. And then I'll read you a couple of her stories too. So um, we are going to talk today about, and I don't normally video myself, so hopefully I don't look like a crazy lady. But we are going to talk about Kelly DiPuccio right now. Um, and she has kind of a funny last name, a kind of hard to say last name. So one thing that she said when I was researching her online was that her last name rhymes with Smoochio. Can you blow Smooch? So Kelly DiPuccio said her name rhymes with Smoochio. And you can also remember it by thinking about Pooch like a dog. And Mrs. DiPuccio, our author that we're talking about today, has three dogs, three dogs and three kids. So she is from Michigan. She grew up there and she lives there now um, with her husband and her three kids who are getting to be grownups. And one is even getting ready to have a baby. So Mrs. DiPuccio is going to be a grandma. And she learned about writing kids books from her kids because they taught her cool stuff like soup rhymes with poop and armpits make really great instruments and all kinds of silly stuff like that. And the underpants are funny. And I bet you know that already because there's so many funny underpants books out there. So let's see, what else do I want you to know about Miss Kelly DiPuccio? So one thing that's really cool about her is that all of her books um, have like a lot of heart. They have characters who are strong and they stand up for what's right and they want to do the right thing and make the world a better place. And I love that about all of her stories. But what's even cooler is that she takes that awesomeness, that, that, mm, that grit in all of her characters and all the to stories look totally different because they all have different illustrators. So like she has Dragon was terrible. And what's really cool about that is that even though her books are kind of serious and inspiring, they're also really funny. And you're going to get to see that in a few minutes. So even when they're talking about something serious, they're really funny. So she has Gaston. And um, this is illustrated by Christian Robinson and Crafty Chloe, which are illustrated by Heather Ross. Everyone Loves Bacon by Eric Wright. And the one I am most excited to read to you today, Grace for President. So I think that you're probably watching this really close to the election and I bet maybe you're talking about it at home or at school or on the bus or wherever you go. I bet you're hearing lots and lots about the election and vote for fill in the blank. And this is a really cool book that kind of talks about that and how we vote and especially how we vote for president. So I'm going to read you Grace for President, which is written by Kelly DiPuccio and illustrated by Lewin Pham. So Grace for President. So we'll see how this goes reading it like this. One Monday morning in September, Mrs. Barrington rolled out a big poster with all of the president's pictures on it. Grace Campbell could not believe her eyes. Where are the girls? Do you see any girls in those presidential pictures? Nope, me neither. What in the world? That is a very good question, said Mrs. Barrington. The truth is our country has never had a woman president. No girl president ever, Grace asked. 
No, I'm afraid not, said Mrs. Barrington. Grace sat at her desk and stewed. No girls? Who ever heard of such a crazy thing? Finally, she raised her hand. Yes, Grace? I've been thinking it over and I'd like to be president. Several students in the class laughed. Well, I think that's a star-spangled idea, Grace, said Mrs. Barrington. In fact, we can have our own election right here at Woodrow Wilson Elementary. The snickering in the room stopped. Grace smiled. Would anyone else like to run for president? Mrs. Barrington asked the class. Nobody raised their hand. Becoming president was going to be easy, Grace thought. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be easy? The next day, Mrs. Barrington made an announcement. In the name of democracy, I have invited Mr. Waller's class to join our election. Their class has nominated Thomas Cobb to be their presidential candidate. Grace's heart sank. Thomas was the school spelling bee champion. His experiments always took a blue ribbon at the science fair, and he was captain of the soccer team. Becoming president wasn't going to be so easy after all, Grace thought. The teachers put the names of all 50 states in the District of Columbia into a hat. Everyone except for Grace and Thomas got to choose a state. I'm Texas, said Anthony. I'm New Hampshire, said Rose. I'm Michigan, said Robbie. Remember who's from Michigan? Kelly DiPuccio. What does the number 16 mean? Each state is assigned a number of electoral votes. That number is determined by how many people live in that state, said Mrs. Barrington. Each of you will be a representative for your state. Altogether, our country has 538 electoral votes, Mr. Waller explained. On election day, the candidate who receives 270 electoral votes or more wins the election. Why 270, asked Rose. That's more than half of all the electoral votes, Mr. Waller said. Becoming president really wasn't going to be easy, Grace thought. She looks worried, doesn't she? Grace came up with a campaign slogan. Make history, vote Grace Campbell for president. Thomas came up with his own campaign slogan. Vote for Thomas Cobb, the best man for the job. Grace listed, listened to what issues were important to the students and she made a list of campaign promises. A peaceful school, no bullies. A cleaner school, no littering. Better hot lunches. No more fish stick tacos. Thomas made up his own list of promises. Free tutoring, free soccer lessons, fish stick tacos every week. Grace made campaign posters and buttons. Thomas made posters and buttons too. Look at all their signs. You see all those? Each week, the teacher set aside time for the candidates to meet with their constituents. Polls were taken. Votes were making, voters were making their choices. Grace continued to campaign. At recess, she gave speeches. During lunch, she handed out free cupcakes. After school, she held rallies. Meanwhile, Thomas wasn't worried. He had cleverly calculated that the boys held slightly more electoral votes than the girls. At recess, Thomas studied his spelling words. During lunch, he worked on his latest science experiment. After school, he played soccer. Even before the election, Grace made good on her promises. She joined the safety squad, she organized a school beautification committee, and she volunteered her time in the school cafeteria. Whew, she looks exhausted. She's working hard, isn't she? In early November, Woodrow Wilson Elementary hosted a special election day assembly. Grace and Thomas took their places on stage as the school band began to play. Henry was the first representative to approach the microphone. The Yellowhammer State of Alabama cast its nine electoral votes for Thomas Cobb, Fletcher said. The last frontier state of Alaska cast its three electoral votes for the best man for the job, Thomas Cobb. Hannah called out, the Grand Canyon state of Arizona casts its 11 electoral votes for Grace Campbell. 
and so it went. State after state cast their electoral votes. The scoreboard in the gymnasium kept track of the totals. The voting demonstration was quickly coming to an end. Clara approached the podium. The Badger State of Wisconsin cast its 10 votes for my best friend, Grace Campbell. Grace looked at the scoreboard. Thomas had 268 electoral votes. She had 267. There was only one state still unaccounted for. Wyoming. Thomas grinned. Grace felt sick. Sam walked up to the microphone. He looked at Thomas. He looked at Grace. He looked down at Grace's handmade flag. Sam didn't say a word. What are you waiting for? Thomas whispered. The band stopped playing. All eyes were on Wyoming. Finally, Sam cleared his throat. The Equality State of Wyoming casts its three electoral votes for... Oh, who do you guys think it's going to be? Grace Campbell! The gymnasium erupted in loud cheers and a few boos. Mrs. Barrington approached the podium. With 270 electoral votes, the winner is Grace Campbell. Thomas looked stunned. Grace hugged Sam. Why'd you do it, she asked. Sam handed Grace his flag. Because, he said, I thought you were the best person for the job. The following week, students in Mrs. Barrington's class were preparing for their career day presentations. Grace volunteered to go first. She stood in front of the room and glanced at the poster still hanging on the wall. My name is Grace Campbell, and when I grow up, I'm going to be president of the United States. This time, everyone believed she would. What do you think? Do you see that picture? Do you think that's supposed to be Grace when she gets older, becoming president? I think it might be. So that is Grace for President by Kelly DiPuccio, and it's a really cool book. There's also a follow-up to that called Grace Goes to Washington. So I hope you guys enjoy um, Mrs. DiPuccio's books, and I can't wait to, um, to hear what you think of them. So I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great week.